The views and opinions expressed by the hosts of Black Talk Radio News and any guests represents their views and their views only and do not necessarily represent the views of the Black Talk Media Project or the Black Talk Radio Network. And welcome back to Black Talk Radio News. On this September the 11th, 2017, it's a Monday afternoon broadcasting from behind the enemy lines of USA Inc. So, I mentioned that I had a couple of uh, stories that kind of caught my eye uh, pertaining to the area of slavery, terrorism, white supremacy, all of that stuff is connected to me. Um, It's just so many different angles that we could take when we're talking about these Confederate monuments and all of this this racist propaganda that's coming from so-called news outlets. I would never refer to Breitbart, which was founded by a racist uh, white person. I forget the person's name. He's dead now. He had a heart attack. Andrew Breitbart. That, he named it after himself. Andrew Breitbart started this paper as a right wing, uh, I guess you could say grassroots propaganda outlet to get the Tea Party type people and, and all of that. Those uh, people with extremist views elected into political office. Again, I know it's some people out there that say politics don't matter because we never see any change. Well, that's because you don't never, um, you never succeed in politics. Uh, If we're talking black people, look, the black people are part of that participate in politics that run as politicians. Okay. They subservient to the democratic party and the party boss leaders. And then also, just because you have a certain skin color doesn't mean that you believe in practicing justice. Skin color has nothing to do with your morale, your moral compass. It has nothing to do with whether or not you practice justice or injustice. It has nothing to do with it. But for the most part, anytime you make some gains or some inroads, or you have like a Cynthia McKinney who becomes a congressman, woman, and she does what we expect her to do well, then she gets undermined by the political party, which she was reliant on to support her against Republicans. But they ended up supporting another black person, another Democrat to undermine her because they didn't like the issues that she was bringing up. You know, some very embarrassing things to the United States government as a whole in, engaged in worldwide slavery, terrorism, and, and oppressing all of these nations. Okay, so, but you, you, have, you can't say that things are worse for black people today or at the same, we're suffering the same sort of terrorism that we were suffering, let's say, in the 1930s, 40s, 50, and, and, and 50s. Okay. So there have been political gains made. Those people that say that there's been no gains made, you know, well, you know, they're just not being honest with you. They're not. They're not being uh, humiliated in public when it comes to public accommodations and things of that nature. We, you know, we, it's many things that I think my generation and, other, and others take for granted that I don't have to walk the streets in fear. And so, the, but... We still have these elements, these white supremacist terrorist elements out there that that want us to live in fear, that want to terrorize us. And they know that they need large numbers to participate along with them in order for it to be successful, like back in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. All right. Okay, so, but I got this story from Breitbart.com. Actually, the story I'm showing, uh, I'm sharing with you comes from Snopes.com, a fact-checking website, although they don't always get the facts correct. So it's always important for you to do your research. But this story, um, apparently Breitbart put out an article that a violent mob, okay, that's the title it used, violent mob. Here's their actual title. Violent mob forces police to shut down, quote-unquote, Patriot Picnic at Chicano Park. So Chicano Park is in San Diego, okay? Now, California period, uh, southwestern um, states tend to have a high population of Chicanos, Latinos, Hispanics, whatever you, whatever 
a word they want to use to describe themselves. I'm just using a word that's described in this article. So, but it's actually a Chicano park, right? Um, and so you had this guy who ran for political office. Let me pull up the Snopes article. Um, he's no longer in politics. I think he wants to run. He once ran for governor at one time in 2014. And so he goes out there to have this so-called Patriot picnic to get people to come out there and look at these murals featuring Chicano culture and heritage. You know what murals are. You know, when people paint cartoon like uh, characters or real fi- uh, real figures, historical figures, or even um, you know, fictional, just somebody that represents the culture wearing cultural dress or what. Now, we see these murals all over the United States, uh, particularly in high schools. They would paint murals and, and things of that nature. So this guy, I'm trying to find his name, Tim. All right, here it is. Uh, California Assemblyman Tom Donnelly. Now, he's the one that wrote the article and Breitbart published the article, but he is the one he who said that a violent mob had descended on a pro-Donald Trump group of people who were present in a historic San Diego park, ostensibly intending to eat a piece of lunch and view cultural murals while they were campaigning to have, that they were campaigning to have this mantle. So what are they, why do they want to take down these murals? Because of the move to take down Confederate monuments, plaques, and things of that nature. Now, Again, these symbols mean something. They send a message to their intended victims as well as to those who would terrorize them. They uh, Symbols are important. And anybody that tells you that they are not important, then they just really don't understand uh, human psyche. You know, that's why we want positive images of black people out there. That's why we created a Black Talk Media Project to elevate black voices because, you know, images and messages mean something. They mean something. So what this guy Donnelly wanted to do, he had heard that they were talking about removing a a um, Confederate plaque honoring some Confederate dude who's not native to California because California did not even exist if I'm if I'm my history is correct at the time of the Civil War. California wasn't even a state yet. Okay? It probably was still under the control of the Comanches. So it was so why do you have Confederate statues in 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 Southwestern and even Midwestern and and I think even in Seattle, Seattle, Washington. Why do you have plaques to Confederate soldiers, generals? It, it don't matter. But we know what they stand for. They stand for slavery and they stand for white supremacy, terrorism. That's what they stand for. So there's a reason that you got these plaques at, at, at this San Diego Chicano Park. It's a reason white people put that up. What's the reason? To convey a message. And for these started going up in the 1930s and, 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 and later. And, you know, just black people were being lynched and openly terrorized and prevented from voting, from gaining any kind of power in politics. In fact, the whole white terrorism era that we're still in, um, but that proceeded or excuse me not proceeded but followed the civil war was them angry because black people were gaining political power in the south by having the right to vote by voting into office locally and at the federal level and into congress black senators black um uh um representatives so this was a way to terrorize them some of those people were even assassinated You know, if you read the book about Benjamin uh, Tillman out of South Carolina, who helped found Clemson, South Carolina, I mean, Clemson University in the red shirts, read about them terrorists. All right. And so they throw these things up, you know, black people and, and, and right thinking people, people who believe in justice at the time, they ain't had no political power. The United States federal government was backing these terrorists like they do today and that black people didn't have the the 
I hate to say it like this, but I just got to say it like this. They didn't have the courage to challenge these people. They were being openly terrorized, and I'm not criticizing them or calling them cowards or anything, but I'm just saying they were vastly outgunned, outorganized. Again, the United States federal government has always supported white supremacist terrorists in these organizations like the Ku Klux Klan, like Bill Benjamin Tillman's red shirts out of South Carolina. They have always supported this. So, you know, we live in a different era now. Again, we have, through the sacrifice of our ancestors, have enjoyed certain rights and privileges that they were not enjoying, that they were fighting for. And I feel like it's up to us to continue to keep pu- pushing society in the right way. Look, I wish there was a revolution tomorrow. I really do. I wish there was another civil war tomorrow so we can finally end slavery. And that needs to be the reason for the revolution, as Max Parthas always says, in conclusion, a new abolitionist radio. So I wish that would happen tomorrow. But in the meantime and in between time, I'm glad that there are primarily young people and others who are putting pressure on politicians and saying, you know what, we're tired of paying taxes to honor terrorists, to honor people who believe 100% in a right, a supposed right to enslave other people. We're No, we're, we're going to show some self-respect. We're no longer afraid of you like we were in the past because you don't have us outgunned like you did in the past. And so, no, we're not going to tolerate this. We're going to, in a, in a democratic manner, we're going to use nonviolence to put pressure to bring down these monuments so we don't have to keep paying for them nor do we have to be subjected to that visual terrorism. It's visual terrorism, as some artists would tell you. And so this, and, and you, how are you going to call yourself a patriot, having a patriot picnic, and you're standing up, uh, be, or you're protesting the removal of an anti-American plaque honoring, commemorating, a member of the Confederate States of America that don't no longer that no longer exists. But these are people who kill Americans. The possibly the only Americans in the military at the time who actually fought for actual liberation and freedom of a people. I know that's what George Bush and them said that they was going to and Dick Cheney said they were going to Iraq to do. We're going we're going to be greeted as liberators. No. That actually occurred during the Civil War. That actually occurred as white, black, uh, um, soldiers of different nationalities participated in the Union Army and put down these terrorists. They didn't foresee Lincoln betraying them because he was a racist who never intended to end slavery while claiming to be an abolitionist. Yeah, he spoke out against slavery. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. But guess what? Actions speak louder than words. And his letters, his words to a Georgia, uh, I think he was a congressman, Stevens at the time was, y'all think that we're going to end slavery in the South. No, we have no such intentions. We just, you know, don't want to expand it to the new territories we're conquering from these Indians and what have you. Remember, Lincoln ordered the mass hanging of some Indians as well. This man is a white supremacist, no one to be celebrated whatsoever. And I know he got a monument, and I spoke my piece to his monument in Washington, D.C. back in in August, August the 20th. We put a video out about that. But look, one monument at a time. We don't have the political clout nor the public opinion on our side to take down a monument such as the Lincoln. But we can, we do have the public on our side to rid society of these monuments that clearly, clearly promote racism, white supremacy, and slavery, right? But how are you going to call yourself a patriot and you honoring anti-Americans, people who killed Americans, all to keep another group of people in chains? These people are terrorists, and they have been pacified too long, starting with Lincoln and that 13th Amendment. But, you know, 
propaganda. They put out this fake propaganda talking about this was violence, that, oh, these peaceful Donald Trump supporters went to Chicano Park to look at some murals that they might think about pushing to have taken down because, hey, they taking down our Confederate monument. So, um, again, uh, what what are you? Are you a citizen of the CSA or a citizen of the USA? Because I can't tell. Which is it? So, they, this is what this guy wrote. An explosive confrontation erupted at San Diego's Chicano Park Sunday afternoon as an angry mob of several hundred protested a pro-Donald Trump group's decision. And again, it wasn't even that many of them, less than 10. Decision to hold a Patriot picnic in the symbolic public space. The Patriot picnic tour was captured on YouTube and shows a group of a half dozen or so gathered around a picnic table that is painted the colors of the Mexican flag on an unoccupied side of the park sandwiched between a busy road and a freeway. They were there ostensibly to eat a piece of lunch, but as one of the group was filming some of the murals and doing his own commentary, a phalanx of San Diego police formed a line along the sidewalk as the crowd of counter demonstrators became increasingly agitated. Within minutes, the group was surrounded by hundreds of people, many wearing brown berets and waving Mexican and communist flags while filming with phones and trading insults with pro-Trump demonstrators. So, again, this guy is being very deceptive. I did not see a bunch of of brown berets, but, you know, he knows the history of California. He knows the history of the brown berets in their alliance with the Black Panther Party, which wore black berets. And so, yeah, he, he's aware of some of California's history, and he's trying to appeal to these racist terrorists to say, hey, these people are communists. Um, you know, they are anti-white, they're this, that, and, and other, and, and it's a bunch of bull BS. Now, hey, you went there to agitate according to even the police say that they are the ones who started the argument with the the counter protesters and, and being using inflammatory language and instigating it, and that uh the police told you to leave because you was instigating violence. And then they escorted you out out of there. Now, again, do not take me to be saying that I'm against violence because I'm not against the use of violence. As Malcolm X said, I'm, I'm for the use of violence used in an intelligent manner. And I'm not going to condemn the violence of Antifa or anybody else that goes out there in the streets and battles these terrorists and what have you because I see violence being committed against non-white and even poor white oppressed communities all over the United States. This whole nation was founded on violence, you know, because uh, slavery is a violent act. It takes violence to put people into slavery and, and, and to maintain, you know, such a position over um, uh, your victims. So I, I'm not going to denounce violence until, you know, um, people stop celebrating, have military parades and 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 waving their flags of nationalism and, and, and talking about we need to go kill so and so and no, I'm not no, I'm not gonna do it. Like uh MLK said, Martin Luther King Jr. said, the United States the greatest purveyor of violence on the planet. And I got enough common sense to know that I need to fight violence with violence. You know, I believe in self-defense. I don't believe in, in in turning the other cheek in every circumstance. You know, yeah, if I'm in a relationship with someone and they do something to me, uh, I'm not going to retaliate by doing something terrible to them. That's what it means when you're talking about turning the other cheek. Not somebody come up to you and punch you in the mouth and you, you know, turn the cheek because obviously your face is going to turn when somebody punch you in it. And, and and then you just go about your way. Oh, no. Let's not misinterpret stuff. It, the context means everything. And somebody punch me in the face, I'm going to punch him right back. Okay? That's how I get down. That's, that's common sense. Even animals got enough sense to defend themselves when being violently attacked. They may not, you know, the gazelle may not survive the lion's attack, but he certainly 
tries to survive by trying to kick him in the face, do whatever he can and use violence. And we see it in nature. So violence is natural. It's a natural defense mechanism. But see, but they need this right here, what we're seeing here, represented by this propaganda um, that was written by this man and published by Breitbart.com is that they want to portray their victims as being violent. Remember the Klan movie, um, um, Birth of a Nation, and how they portrayed black people recently freed from slavery, maybe 30, 40 years out of slavery, and uh, pre-1865 slavery, I should say, and just show them as being violent, brutal beasts, out to assault, the womanhood of the white woman and, and, and just a bunch of propaganda, a bunch of lies to justify their terrorism. This is the same thing that this man specifically in Breitbart generally is pushing here. They, they haven't changed their tactics up. And this is why media is so important. This is why independent black media is so important to fight them propaganda wars, man. For real. So, this uh, uh, Snopes did point out that this. Let me just give you what uh, what Snopes' verdict was on that. And again, they are not the the last authority on what's true and what's not true. Always look for other sources, but I agree with their assessment in this case. The claim was that pro Donald Trump activists were accosted by a violent mob while eating pizza at a Chicano park. Uh, the rating is a. It, it's a mixture of truth and lies is what they say. Well, that's the most effective lies is right there is one that's um, mixed with a little truth. Uh, police was true. Police escorted a small group of picnickers out of San, San Diego's Chicano Park after they instigated a shouting match with counter protesters was false. Police received no reports of violent incidents at the event and made no Arrest. So again, these people are nothing but liars. Uh, Breitbart's a liar. Steve Bannon's a liar. Breitbart is a has been on my radar for a long time as a propaganda outlet for racism and white supremacy. All right. So um, let me get ready to return us to a music mix again. If you have any news to share, you can give us a call at eight six six five ten ninety twenty five. That's eight six six five ten. 9025 uh, hit star star to put yourself in the caller's queue. I'll see you unmuted on the board. Please watch your background noise. And I am going to take a pause for a music break. And when I come back, I want to talk about this story where you have some legislation that has been introduced by two members of the, uh, what do they call it? The congressional black caucus um, have introduced federal legislation to remove these Confederate monuments that promote slavery and racism. We'll be back on the other side. This is BTR News coming at you through the Black Talk Radio Network, providing you with new black media for the new millennium. Hello, this is Scotty Reed, and thank you for listening to this podcast and sharing it with others. Please consider making a donation to the U.S.-based nonprofit media organization, Black Talk Media Project, in support of its efforts to elevate independent black voices. You can also support the work by joining the network's social media community, BTR Community, for just $24 a year. Black Talk Media Project is leading the way in the production of grassroots black media. 